that have married idiots. We come out here to forewarn the people of the judgment and to bring the, the elect back to the heavenly father. Right? So, you say you believe in the Bible, brother? Okay. We are first with the experience. So, you something. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. Bring it out. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. So we are the temple of God. Right? Give me Acts 7 40, uh, 44. Right? The temple of God is not a church. Right? It's not a building. It's not, you know, somewhere you can walk in and you know you have the big cross. That's not the temple. The temple is us. We are the temple. You got it. Acts chapter 7 verse 48. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. So the Lord is not in temples made with hands. Right. You cannot build, they get a group of construction workers and they kind of build on this temple all summer and make it and they say, okay, the Lord is dwelling inside of this church. That's not how it goes. The Lord do not dwell in temple made with hands, read. Right? As saith the prophet, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Yeah, the Lord said, you, I'm, I'm too big, I'm too great, I'm too glorious, too powerful, I'm too, you know, everything, man. I'm too righteous for you to bring, for you to build a building and say, okay, the, the Lord dwells here. So the Lord don't dwell in any of these buildings. Any church you may have ever went to in your life, the Lord wasn't in the church. The Lord wasn't in the mosque, the Lord wasn't in the hall, the Lord is in no building. What's the, the, the true temple is not a building, right? What is the true temple, brother? We just read it, First Corinthians 3, read it again. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Bring it out. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. Who's the temple of God? Ye are the, are the temple of God. God. It's the church. Ye, ye are, are the temple, temple of God. God. It's the building. Ye, ye are, are the temple, temple of God. God. A bunch of bricks. Ye, ye are, are the temple, temple of God. God. So what's the temple of God? Ye, you, us. Right. We are the temple of God. Now let's say we had a church and we invited you to our church. Right? We invited you to the building. You can come in on Saturday. You come in, you sit in the chairs, sit in the pews. And then while we teaching the word in the back, you start rolling up a blunt and then start smoking inside. Would you do that? Why not? How? Oh. But we but who's the church? Exactly. So if you're if you wouldn't smoke inside of a building, why would you put the smoke inside the true church, which is which is you? Right. Right, read it from the top. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. So the, first Peter 2 and 4. so the Spirit of God dwelleth in us. Right? So we are smoked in, brother. You're defiling the church. You're defiling God's true temple. You understand that? So you actually have to not just say, should I smoke now or later? You should smoke it all. Just like you would never go inside that church and, and, and smoke. Should never cut the smoke on inside the inside the church. How you doing, bro? Right? So we don't smoke at all, brother. You should smoke at all. The Lord said, be sober. Right? We have a sober mind. You have first Peter 5. 5. First Peter chapter oh, sorry. 5, verse 8. Be sober. Be sober. Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Lord is clear not to the Lord's the, uh, the devil is roaming around looking for who he can devour. And if you don't have a sober mind, you can get caught up and, and be a, a victim to Satan man, and his devices. You understand that, brother? So we have to be sober minded because we are the true church. And Lord said, you know, if anybody who defies the temple will be destroyed. So if you get high, you smoke with weed, because the Lord is not coming back to be a nice guy. Right? Jesus Christ is returning to call destruction and hell and fire and death on the earth. He's not coming back to hug and kiss everybody, man. Right? So when the Lord returns... There is a lot of evil. Hold on. We didn't, we didn't actually interrupt them. We didn't actually interrupt them. Damn idiots. And they're going to be destroyed, man. All these white people are going to be destroyed. Right. Especially if you want the tight jeans that let the ankles show. Right. That's the feminine. They're going to be destroyed. You know what I'm saying? Rude men and prideful men are going to be destroyed. So the Lord is not coming back to, give me Luke 13 and 3. The Lord is not coming back to save everyone. The Lord is coming back to actually kill a lot of people. That's right. You understand? And we want you to be one of the few people that the Lord actually saves. Right. You understand that? Bring it up. It's the book of Luke, chapter 13, verse number 3. Bring it out. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So the Lord said, unless you repent, 
you should all likewise fear. Right? What do it mean to repent and forsake your wicked ways? Right? You guys are to be to treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath. Right, so he says like treasure a hand in a field. Now you had, now let's say, this is concrete, let's say right underneath this concrete, you know for a fact, there's six feet deep, there's hidden treasure under here. You will steal everything that you have to get that treasure. You will get rid of your house. Hey, man, people are thinking crazy. Why is he selling his house? You will get rid of that house, your car. You will get rid of them, your, anything. You will forsake all to make sure you get that treasure. Because you want to buy this land. You want to buy this portion, or however much it costs to buy this street downtown. You want to buy it so you can get that treasure. So if you want to, so to buy this land, you need a million dollars, you will get rid of all your clothes. You will get rid of, you will sell all the clothes. Yeah, yeah, so the kingdom of heaven is like that gold that's buried up under this concrete. You gotta be willing to give up everything to get that gold. And that's including smoking weed, brother. You gotta say, I, like I said, you will give rid of a house. You might, some of us got a family, I'll give rid of that whole house. We my family, we'll be homeless for a whole, however long it takes, we'll be homeless to get to that damn gold. It's worth it. The people will get rid of the house, they'll get rid of the cars, they'll get rid of their clothes, the Jordans, whatever it is, they're going to get rid of it to get that gold. And if you would get rid of a house, if you would get rid of the house, surely you can get for gold. And surely you can get rid of a, a weed for the kingdom of heaven. Are you willing to give it up for the kingdom of heaven, brother? You said finding gold would be the happiest day of your life. Well, give me Proverbs 21. So this is the happiest day of your life that you are forsaken all for the, for the people that's living according to the flesh. They're not going to get that goal. They're not going to get the kingdom of heaven. But you know there's a, something greater than me. There's a greater high than smoking weed. And that's the kingdom of heaven. Listen to this, brother. You know. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 2, verse number 1. Bring it out. My son, 
if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart unto understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, if you cry after knowledge, if you strive for knowledge, you seek knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hidden treasures. Yeah, so the Lord said you gotta seek after knowledge as like as in his silver and hidden treasures. You said you would do anything for that, that gold. You would do anything for that silver. So how much more for the kingdom of heaven? It's like the kingdom of heaven or we. Which come on now, brother, this shouldn't be more. If I was about to blink, just get rid of it. Empty the bag, empty the pocket, throw it in the trash. That's and right. I'll never look back again. That's right. That's what I would do if I was you, man. Let me start at 21 to 1. If I was you, I'd forsake you for the kingdom of heaven. That's, that's for, this is such thing as, uh, what they call it, uh, when you trade. Like, you, yeah, you used to basically trade. Before you had money, a barter system. You had a barter system. So it's like, I'm saying, oh man, I like that jacket. That's a nice jacket. And I'll say, look, I don't got no money for it, but hey, I'll give you my jacket. And you might say, okay, that's a fair trade. Let's just jack this thing. You understand that? Or might, you might say, hey, man, I like those boots. You might say, well, hey, you want these boots, trade me your headphones. And we decide between one another if this is a worthy trade, if this is fair. You wouldn't do a fair trade. You wouldn't give up the gold chain for a nickel. You know what I'm saying? That would be a fair trade. Now, if you get something better, if you say, look, all, look, I'll give you, all you gotta do is give me three pennies. If you give me three pennies, I'll give you my coat, my jacket, my Nike boots. You would say, oh damn, I just came up. Yeah, take, here, three pennies. So the Lord is saying, if you give up the weed, I'll give you the kingdom of heaven. Take it, but I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it, man. That's what I would do. That's, that's, that's not even, that's like a steal. That's damn their robbery. This all I gotta do is give up some damn weed and I'll get the kingdom of heaven. Let me start right 21 to 1. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 21 and verse number 1. Bring it up. My son, hast thou sinned? Do so no more, but ask pardon for thy former sins. Flee from sin. What the Lord said? Flee, flee from, from sin. sin. You gotta flee from that thing, brother. But right now you kinda got it close on, you kinda gripping it tight with your hand, you close to your pocket. The Lord said, flee, you gotta run away from it, read. As from the face of a serpent. Like a serpent, you see a snake come at you, jump up and take off. Right, keep reading. For if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion, slaying the souls of men. All iniquity is as the two-edged sword, the wounds whereof cannot be healed. Yeah, so the Lord is saying that sin. Hey, brother, come here, words of the Lord. The Lord is saying that sin is like a serpent ready to attack. It's going to ultimately get you killed, brother. It's going to ultimately get you devoured. Why did your brother have a picture? The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 6. Bring it out. I made hate. I made hate. hate. You, mean you hurried up. You got a job? You ever been late to work? Oh, you kind of you kind of like I'm just taking my time leaving the house. No, you kind of rushing about the house. You kind of forgetting things. You kind of checking everything where the You rush to the car, speeding. You barely stopping at even stop signs. You don't do a full stop. You kind of racing to work, right? That's how Lord said. I made hate, right? I made hate no, and delayed Lord. not to keep thy commandments. And delayed not to keep the commandments. So the Lord said, I made haste and I delayed not to keep. Do this here, brother. No, Pay attention, brother. There's going to be demons out here. That's all that is. I'm not talking about you. You are a demon, but I'm not talking about you. Right? So, the point is, brother, is that you got to make haste to keep these demons. I said, you, but you don't got them all day, brother. So now is the time to come back to the Lord. That's so right. What is the for sake of this, brother? Yes. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verse number 3. Read it out. Talk no more exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. You listen to brother. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. No, just talk. 
By him, actions are ways. Just say whatever you want. By him, actions are ways. Say it with something. By him, actions are ways. So the Lord wanted to see action. So if you said, I'm going to forsake the weed, but you still kind of got it in your hand, the Lord wanted to see actions. Right? So the Lord wanted to kind of see you go it away, break it up. The Lord kind of wanted to see you got it left in the back, empty it out, and never do it again. That's what the Lord wants, brother. He wants to see actions. You can't lie kind of finesse the Lord. You can lie to us. You might say, yeah, I'll do it. And we say, hey, all crazy. That's good. That's good, brother. And then you go out and smoke weed, but the Lord sees everything. The Lord going to know if it's truly missing. The Lord going to see that I'm not going to smoke weed after today. No, not after today. Give me some right I'll try. I'll try. It's not after today, brother. Not after today. Not after today. The time is not. The time is not. The Lord time brought you here now. Yeah. Lord didn't bring you here after today. He brought you here now. He ain't bargaining with you. He ain't here to bargain me, with you. Me, we never met before. We could have met at the mall. We could have met at Keisha House. We could have met at work. But the Lord said, no, I want to meet right now when the word of God is coming out because he wants you to first thing today. Hey, hey, wait, bring it up. The book of Sirach, chapter 5, verse number 7. Bring it out. Make no tarry to turn to the Lord. Uh, after today. Make no tarry to turn to the Lord. Next week. Make no tearing turn to the Lord. After I'm after I healed all my stress. Make no tearing to turn to the Lord. Don't take your time to turn to the Lord. Read. And put not off from today to day. And do what? Put not off from day to day. The Lord said put not off day to day. Right, do it now, read. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in the security thou shalt be destroyed. Suddenly the wrath of the Lord shall come forth. So the Lord is coming like a thief in the night. That's right. You may not have next week. You may not have tomorrow. It is not just weed. It's any type of iniquity and sin that we're committing as individuals or as a people have to be forsaken. No. Right. Right. They got to be because who promised you tomorrow? You talking about after today. Who promised you to let you see tomorrow? Don't, no, God didn't say promise you that. God told God told, told you to, to seek his face. He never said that you're going to live tomorrow. That's right. You know how many people went off got dressed for work and didn't know that they were about to die and Christ only would have worked? No. Tomorrow not promised. So we got to do it now. Now, if you die right now, God forbid, let's say you die today, you are face the Lord as a, somebody who smoked weed, who destroyed his temple. Do you want to face the Lord that, that way or do you want to face the Lord as a righteous man? A holy man, one that forsook all for that treasure, which is the kingdom of heaven. You want to forsake, you want to, when you face up, when you face the Lord, you want to say, look, here I am as a righteous man. I gave him my all. I gave him my best. Not I was just getting high all day and doing whatever I wanted to do, man. You understand? Bring this up. Book of Revelation, chapter 16, verse 15. Bring it out. Behold, I come as a thief. What the Lord say? I come as a thief. Yeah, thief come when you least expect it. You ever see the movie Home Alone? Yeah, they didn't know a thief was going. They went off to Paris. When they have went off to Paris on a family vacation, they knew a thief was going to break their house. No, they would have stayed. They didn't know when that thief was coming. The thief dressed up as a cop and he didn't introduce himself. They had no idea. But the kid, the little boy, he knew that the thief was going to be there. So he prepared. Right? He made the trap. Yeah, he, he tricked them. You understand? And that's how you got to be. You know that the thief is coming. And the thief is who the world called Jesus Christ that was shot. Right. And when he come here unexpectedly, hey, he's going to destroy a lot of people. Right? He's not just coming back to hug and kiss and rock babies to sleep. Right. He's coming to kill people. He's coming to destroy people. He's coming to burn America down. Right. This is what the Lord is coming back to do. And you got to be prepared. That's You're right. going to be caught off guard in the midst of it. Some people the Lord is going to return and they're going to be in the middle of adultery. Sleeping with another man's wife. They're going to be texting another man's wife while the Lord is on his way back. They don't realize it. They're going to be a bunch of people grouped up in a car with the windows rolled up, getting high, and that's you know the Lord is returning. Right. Or, and there's going to be some people while the, when the Lord comes back, they're reading their Bibles. Some people when the Lord when, they, when the Lord catches them, they was watching. They was reading, praying, they were studying. You know, they was in the middle of fast, fasting. You know what I'm saying? They was probably giving alms, doing a righteous deed. And then some people gonna be in the middle of stealing. Some kid gonna be in the corner store, what's that, Jake's corner store, stuffing honey buns in his pocket, and the Lord don't even realize the Lord is about to come back right now. Do you wanna be one of those people, brother? So you gotta forsake that today. Read it from the top. 
Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. Bring it out. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Yeah, so if you caught out there naked and in sin, hey, you're going to be ashamed, man. The Lord might have been destroyed. Why read it though? The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 1. Bring it out. What of the times and the seasons? Brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. He said, you know perfectly that the day of the Lord cometh like a thief in the night. You already know these, brethren. Right, right. But when they shall say, peace and safety. Some people are going to say peace and safety. Right? Give me Ezekiel 21 today. Some people are going to say, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, 12 and 21. Some people are going to say peace and safety. Right? Keep it. Then sudden. Destruction cometh upon them. And suddenly destruction cometh upon them. You read it. As travail, as travail upon a woman with child. Yeah, like when a woman have a child, she has no idea her water gonna break. She has no idea. Best you know, she probably just walking around, she minding her business, she no water broke. Let's then read this. So that's how it's all going to be, brother. Right, bring it up. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 12, verse 21. Bring it out. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man. What is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel? Yeah, what's that proverb? What's that saying that the people say, right, Reed? Saying, the days are prolonged, and every vision faileth? Yeah, so some people believe the days are prolonged. They don't think the Lord coming back tomorrow. They don't think he'll come back next month. You understand that? They don't think he's coming back in 50 years. That's your bus, brother? All right, brother. All right, take a flyer, brother. Take a flyer. You gonna get rid of the? You gonna get? You gonna be out here tomorrow? We gonna, no, not tomorrow. We gonna be here every Saturday at three o'clock. I'll be here next Saturday. All right, brother. You gotta get rid of that, brother. No. ASAP, brother. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but bring that from the top. Bring your top. Look at Ezekiel chapter twelve, verse twenty-one. Bring it out. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying? The days are prolonged. Yeah, like I said earlier, a lot of people believe that days are prolonged, right? They don't view the Lord coming back next week or next month. They think that they, they think that maybe it happened to their grandchildren. They think maybe it happened in a hundred years, or maybe it'll never happen. They're not pre preparing and living as if they believe that they truly believe the Lord coming back next week. Whenever you know that, something is going you get prepared. But it's like a movie of like a part two movie, but like Cat in the Hat. They knew that the mother was on the way home. They dirty the whole house. It was ridiculous. Man, they had a hole in the floor. You know, the cat was pulling things out of his head, a tap. Thing one and thing two, open a treasure box, all hell broke loose. You understand? But they knew they at five o'clock, mom's gonna be here. Right. And we gotta clean up. And the little white boy was kinda on the cat behind, like, hey, no, we got this house. My mom on the way, man. You know what I'm saying? And that's how we gotta be, man. Our father is on the way, man. That's right. Our big brother Yahweh Shah is on the way, man. We don't got time to be keep partying and dirty and we gotta lock the treasure box. That thing when it thinks that open. Not a joke. This is not a game. This is nothing to be taken lightly, man. That this is a, that this is real. Get rid of it. And they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel, but say unto them, the days are at hand, and the effect of every vision. For there shall be no more any vain vision, nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. Yeah, there's nothing any more vain vision, man. This thing is coming to pass. We have to become one. Chapter 2, verse 1. Bring it out. I will stand upon my watch. Yeah, we're standing upon, as a watchman, we stand upon our watch. Right, we stand on that line. We stand upon that line. We stand upon that line. 
as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us work. Yeah, so the Lord is long suffering to us, right? Really? Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Hey, sister, come hear the words of, of God. I said, come hear the words of God, sister. Hear, See that? Hey, y'all people don't want to hear the word of God. They hate the word of God. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. By your actions, you show you hate the word of God. They come hear the words of the Lord. They come hear the word. Now, when there's drama, you want to come up. But when I say come hear the word, what's your nationality? What's your nationality? You don't need to worry What's your nationality? You're not going to give me Revelation 13 to 10. You ain't going to make me. You're the wrong one. Come hear the words of God. Sister, we're talking to you. Come hear the words of God. Give me Revelation 13 to 10. Book of Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. Bring it out. He that leadeth into captivity. The white woman do. He that leadeth into captivity. Who led us into captivity? He that leadeth into captivity. Shall go into captivity. Shall go into captivity. Shall go into captivity. Shall go into captivity. Revelation 4 26. You're going into captivity. That's right. You're going to put your side around your face and drag you to captivity, man. That's right. Pick your pussy, man. Bring it out. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. Bring it out. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Yeah, so we're going to rule the white woman, even the crippled ones, with a rod of iron. That's right. That's right. That's right. We don't care if they're old. We don't care if they're ugly. We don't care if they blind heads or necks. We don't care, man. We don't care if they're
Revelation chapter 7, verse 1. Yeah. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four quarters of the earth. Hold, holding the four winds of the earth. Wait, holding back the destruction. You know, this is not literal wind. The wind blowing right now, but these angels are holding back the destruction. Holding back the war, man. Right, really? That the wind should not blow on the earth. Right. So you know, so you know it's not literal wind. The little wind, it does blow on the earth. Right, right here. Nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Yeah, and the sea, give me Revelation 17 and 15. Right, the sea represents what? The sea represents the people. They should say things in the tree. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 15. Bring it out. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, right, the water which you saw, right? where the horse sitteth, are peoples, are what? Our people. Our people. And multitudes, and nations, and tongues, and the ten horns which thou sawest. So the people which you see, and the waters which you see, are people, and nations, and tongues. So when the wind is not going to blow on those sea or the trees, it represents the people. Right? Now go to uh, Daniel 4 and 20. Right, hey, brother, give me the words of the Lord. All right, brother. Y'all repent. Go ahead, like, we're God's commandments. Right, Daniel 4 and 20. Down with the tree. It's the book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse number 20. Bring it out. The tree that thou sawest. Which yeah, this is Nebuchadnezzar trying to get an under interpretation of his dream. So he's going to Daniel. chapter 7 verse 2 Bring it out. and I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea saying hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads yeah, so hurt not the earth the trees and the sea that took that from that day in his exceed sealed our servants of our God man so the angels is holding back the destruction. The angels are protecting, in a sense, holding back the destruction, giving the time for the elect to conceal with the knowledge of God. Right, right now. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. Bring it out. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. Yes, yeah, so seal the law. Seal the disciples with the law, the statutes, the commandments, the faith. Right, seal it with the word of God. So our people right now, we're the time we're teaching our people and we're getting them sealed through the Spirit, spiritually sealing them with the Word of God. The elect is being sealed with, with the Word of truth. If they, they're forsaking their old ways, right? They're coming back to the Heavenly Father. They're seeking after Yahweh and Yahweh Shah, right? They're learning God's law, statutes, and commandments, changing their lives around, right? Teaching their children, raising up righteous households, righteous families, remember? You understand? In the midst, in the midst of the, the wicked and evil world and society, man. Right? And then once the elect is sealed, now it's time to let that win, man. Right. Now it's time to let destruction and and, uh, and war happen. Right. Right. Why? Because the elect is sealed, man. Right. And the Lord is coming to, to save the elect. Right? You got Isaiah 10 and 20. So that's what we come out here to do. We come out here once the elect is sealed. They time is up, man. 
right? So we wait on the last brother, man. The last sister, the last child to come into this thing that the Lord have destined from the beginning. And after that, oh, hey, no more America, man. No more America, no more ghettos, no more hoods, no right. more white people pulling over you, no more Christian, right? No more damn big, uh, uh, what is this thing? Inflation, man. They said, come here the words of the Lord. What's your nationality, sir? And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel, the remnant, the remnant of Israel, and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob, shall no more again stay upon him that smote them. The, the, the remnant of Jacob is no more going to stay upon him that smote them. Who smote us? Man, Esau. Man. Right? The nation. Man. Our oppressors. We're no longer going to lean upon those who have smoked us, might smitten us. Our people are trusting in society with their system. The Lord says no more, right? Really? But shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. But we'll stay upon the Holy One of Israel. How you doing, brother? Good. You believe in the Bible? I believe in the Lord. Right? Yeah, but I believe in the Spirit. Right? That's what I believe in. All the other shit. Right. How do you know? What, what wait, who do you say you believe in? I believe in thought power. Thought power. Thought power. Thought power. Thought power. Thought power. What is that, for example? Thought, that. thought power is when you align your mind to the nature of things that's going on in the world, atmosphere, cut away anything that's negative. Whatever you think, thought, comes to the There ain't nothing you can look at right now and start. I even had, guess what? Where you going, brother? Yeah, guess what? You start. You know, think of 
why you gotta believe in the Lord, keep God's commandments, you know what I'm saying? Keep uh, enduring, keep believing in how how we always start. And he'll make a way for you, brother. That's right. Right there. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and verse number 6. Bring it out. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. So without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Yeah, so without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. If you want to come to God, you must believe that Yahweh is, is God. Right? Yahweh Shah is coming to God's son. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Yeah, and the Lord will give you a reward, which is the kingdom of heaven, if you diligently seek him. You understand that? So we got to continue to diligently seek the Lord, man. And have faith. You found that? Yeah, maybe I'll be pretty good. Yeah. Listen to this. Listen to this, Moses. That's your bus? Okay, okay, okay. Listen to this. This is the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 25. Bring it out. Know, yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Aphrodite. Right, this is uh, Aphrodite. Right, so Paul is sending Aphrodite. Right, can you read it? My brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministers. So he's a fellow soldier of Paul. He's a laborer. This is a, a mighty brother. This is a brother who's serving the Lord. He's teaching anything that, that the church needs. He's being a servant to the church. Right? This is a loving, kind brother. This is a brother that giving alms. This is a brother of family charity. You understand? Fruit, the fruits of the spirit. This is a brother who gave up his time. You understand? To, to serve the Lord, man. And to be a servant to the church. You understand that, brother? So this is a very mighty brother right here. Keep reading. And he that ministered to my wants. Right, he ministered to Paul once. Whatever Paul needed, the Paphroditus was there to be a servant to him. Whatever he needed, he did whatever he was down for the cause. You understand that, brother? That's how you got to be. You got to be a righteous brother who will do anything for the Lord. Who will be a servant, make himself a servant for the Lord. You understand that? Keep reading. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick. What? He had been sick. So the Paphroditus was sick. Like you said, he had a, a stroke in December. The Paphroditus was out from the worst of the stroke. He was sick and he still served the Lord. He was sick. Right? For indeed he was sick nigh unto death. Like what? Nigh unto death. So he was nigh unto death. He was almost out of here. He almost died. He probably had cancer. He probably was getting bored. He probably was getting weak in the bones. Really? What? He was sick, dying to death, but still served the Lord. I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, this is the book of Philippians. Yep, so like I say, the book of Philippians, and Paul is telling the people, the church of uh, Philippi, about Paphroditus, who was nigh up to death, but still served the Lord. No matter what. So he may be sick, you may be about to die, you may have a stroke, but you gotta say, I still believe in God. I'm still gonna do whatever it needs, whatever I gotta do to serve the Most High God and His only begotten Son. You understand that? It's more that to do. But God had mercy on him. But God had mercy on him, really. And not on him also. But not, Salaki, and God have mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Yeah, so the Lord should have mercy on the Lord can have mercy on you. So even when we go through these trials and tribulations, we may get sick, we may get strokes, we may um, get, uh, get cancer, we may have lung failure, anything may have happened to us, but we still serve the Lord no matter what. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 38, verse number 1. Bring it out. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Right. So Hezekiah was sick unto death. Right? And Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order. What? Set, set thine house in order. order. So when Isaiah, we were, uh, Hezekiah got sick, the whole Isaiah told him, they set your house in order. Right? Yeah, he was one of the kings of Israel. Became the king at the age of 25. Right? So they were one of the top kings of Israel. Right? You had David, you had Hezekiah, and you had Josiah. What? 
Babylon defeated Israel. Second Maccabees chapter 6, verse 30. Bring it out. But when he was ready to die with stripes, he groaned and said, It is manifest unto the Lord that hath the holy knowledge that whereas I might have been delivered from death. Yeah, so, hey, some men of our forefathers had to get delivered from death, really. I now endure sore pains. In so I endure sore pains. So he's going through pains, right, really? In body by being beat. Right, you got beaten. You got beaten up, you got kind of going through sore pains, you're not feeling good, you probably got a broken rib. But in soul I am well. But in soul I am well. So you might have to go through sore pains. You understand that? 
man. You may catch his throat, but his soul got me good. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Bring it out. I can do all things through Hamashiach, which strengtheneth me. Yeah, so Jesus Christ, Yahweh Hamashiach, strengthens us and gave us the ability and the power to do all things. You understand? The Lord said that his commandments are not great in some of So you can handle it, brother. You got the Lord gave you the power to handle it. Right. But the Lord did not give us the spirit of fear, but a power. That's right. And a sound mind. So we can handle it. You can handle it, brother. Give me numbers 15, but yeah, let me tell you something that I believe that you're strong enough. If you can endure a stroke and still be alive and still living, still pushing, still serving the Lord, then show that you can handle this. Right? Bring it up. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Bring it out. Don't speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes, that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. The Lord said make them fringes. All the brothers got fringes. We all got fringes on the border of our government. If we can handle it, you can handle it. We can handle it, brother. We're not stronger than you. You can handle that. You can make you some fringes on the border of your government. Keep it in. Throughout their generation. Even today, throughout your generation. Forever. As long as the people are still uh, bringing forth children, the Lord wants some children to ask fringes. Grow up in fringes. Always for their fringes. Keep it in. And that they put upon them the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And everybody got a ribbon of blue on their fringes, right? And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. And do them. Do what? And do, do them. them. And do so them. So these command these fringes are a physical reminder to keep the commandments. Think upon the commandments. Don't be Or is that too much? You can't find where they sell them? Well, you go to Joanne's Labyrinth, so called Joanne's Labyrinth, and buy fringes from, you know, choice through our different sewing uh, stores, you can buy some fringes. Well, if you come out here next week, we may, you never know, we may have some fringes for you. So we may give you some fringes. Are well, you willing to keep that commandment? Or is that too hard, too much for you? Oh, you can handle that or break. Let's show you something else. Get Exodus 23 and 1. Let me show you something else I believe you can handle. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse number 1. Bring it out. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thy... Say, do not raise a false report. I mean, you can't be a liar. You can't lie, a, lie about a lie on people. You know I mean? Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. You don't want to be an unrighteous witness. 
So you don't want to say, hey, I seen that brother, Michael stealing. And then you be like, oh yeah, I seen him stealing too. And you just lying on him. Right? Is it too hard to stop lying on people? Can you, that's not hard. Can you handle that? Yeah, so we don't want to lie on, against one another. They say, yeah, I seen Moses. He was robbing people. I seen Moses do it, and I didn't do it. And I mean, I didn't see you do it. Right? So we have to be an honest people. Can you handle that? Oh, I'll tell you something. Read out. 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 4. Bring it out. And Ahab came unto his house heavy and displeased because the word of Selected, because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed. Yeah, so he didn't want to give up the inheritance of his first that he got that he received from his father. Right with the son, the firstborn son, especially specifically, he gets an inheritance from the father. Right? He the father not want to give his inheritance up, right? And turned away his face and would not eat no more bread. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad? So his wife asked him, Why are you upset? What are you sad about? That thou eatest no bread. Right, because he don't even want to eat. So she's like, Why are you so mad that you don't want to eat, right? And he said unto her, because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. So he wants he wants Naboth's vineyard. He said, Hey, I'll pay you for that vineyard. I'll pay you, I trade you for it, but I want the vineyard. Now Naboth told him, Nah, this my, gave, my father gave me this, I don't want to sell it. Right, Reed? And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Do is thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be buried. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. She said, Don't worry, I'm going to make sure you get that vineyard. You want it, I'm going to get it for you. Give it. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, and sealed them with his seal. Now she wrote letters in her husband's name, in Ahab's name. Read and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling, dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letter saying, Proclaim a fast, and set Naboth on high among the people, and set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out, and stone him that he may die. So she lied on him. Hey, look, I don't want to sell you the vineyard because my father gave it to me. But this man, his wicked wife, said, No, we're going to kill him. Why? Because he blasphemed God. Did he really blaspheme God? No. He just, all he said, Look, my father gave me this. I don't want to sell it. That's like you get a house. Your father owned a house. He gave it to you. And here comes Esau. I want to take your house. And now he makes you find a way to be sneaking and take your house from you. So she lied and said, hey, you know, it's, give me Acts 25 and 6. Then she lied and said, hey, this man blasphemed God so they can try to kill him. So that's an evil report. That's being a false witness. That's right. being a false witness. That's right. Right? Would you do something like that? No. Is that too hard not to do? Can you handle that? Okay, you can handle that. So we're going to keep fringes. You can handle that. And you can't be a false witness and bear a false witness and lie on people. And we can handle that all praises. I'm bringing this up. This is the book of Acts, chapter 25, verse number 6. Read out. And when he had tarried among them more than 10 days, he went down unto uh, Kazaria, and the next day, sitting on the judgment seat, a commanded Paul to be brought. And when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem. So Paul is in the judgment seat right now. He's being judged. Now the Jews come down from Jerusalem, really. Stood around the boat. And laid many and grievous complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. Which, what? which they, they could not, not prove. prove. So they're lying on him again. Now you got wicked men that that, that commandment too hard for them. But then you got righteous men like yourself. You got righteous men who gonna strive to the death. And they said, I'll never love my brother. You understand that? So that's how you gotta be first Samuel 12 and 3. That's what we gotta strive to be, those type of men. Righteous men. Right, that keep the that keep the commandments of God. A lot of people out here they lying on their people. They lying on people. You know, they kind of get them thrown in jail. Women kind of screaming rape. People saying he shot this person, he shot that person. They kind of what's what you, uh, what you call it? Um, that trial. The jury, the jury just lie. Oh yeah, you know he looked like a thug. He did it. 
all type of max. They call a witness to the stand, kind of lie on the stand, lie on the Bible. We don't want to be those men. We got, we're going to be honest with you. Wait, bring it up. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 12, verse number 3. Bring it up. Behold, here I am, witness against me before the Lord and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Or whose ass have I taken? Or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or whose hand have I received any bribe? Right. So Samuel's asked in the congregation, who have I done anything, who have I ever done anything bad to? Who have I ever done anything, who have I ever wronged? Can you read it? To blind mine eyes therewith, and I will restore it you. And they said, thou hast not defrauded us, nor oppressed us, neither hast thou taken aught of any man's head. And he said unto them, the Lord is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day that ye have not found aught in my hand. And they answered, he is witness. Right, they said, look, they said, hey, it's witness. The Lord is our witness. We never see you anything wrong. We never see you anything 